مرحبا كيفكم؟ Today we're gonna talk about the present tense بالعربي We're gonna start with العامية uh, شامية So Levantine Arabic So first in order to uh, understand the present tense in Arabic You have to know that there are two types of present tense The simple present and the present continuous What are these? So I'm going to share my screen and show you. The examples I'm going to be using in this video are of form one verbs with three consonants. However, the conjugation, the prefixes and the suffixes that come with the conjugation are the same for all forms of the verbs. Okay, but to keep it simple, we're going to use three consonant verbs, so for form one verbs. We're going to use verbs like kataba. So you see it's three consonants. This, the short vowels, they don't count. So the root is the kaf, the ta, and the ba. Shariba, shirib, actually. Katab, shirib in Levantine Arabic. Uh, the three-letter root is the sheen, the ra, and the ba. Amal, which is to do. The three-letter uh, root is the ain, the mim, and the lam. Akal, the three-letter root is the hamza, the kaf, and the lam. And qara is the, the three-letter root is also the qaf, the ra, and the hamza. So here you can see that the hamza is considered a consonant and it's part of the root. Unlike the short vowels, the fatha, dhamma, kasra, these are not part of the root. So the meanings of these verbs is to write, to drink, katab, shirib, amal, to do. In Levantine Arabic, be careful. Amal means to do, not to work. In fusha, it means to work. Akal, to eat, qara, or ere, which means to read. Okay, so as I was saying, there are two kinds of present tense. The simple present and the present continuous. This is what we're going to learn in this video. This is very important for Levantine Arabic. However, for Fusha, it doesn't matter. There's only one... The simple present and the present continuous are conjugated in the same way. There is no difference. What is the simple present in Levantine Arabic? Bishami. The simple present is when we're talking about habits. For example, I sleep at 11 p.m. I exercise daily. These actions are not happening now. They are habits which we usually do. Another kind of simple present is telling a story or describing something that's happening. So, for example, he arrives home, he opens the door, he sees his friends all sitting there. Okay, so here we're describing what happened to this guy. It doesn't have to be now. It happened maybe before, but when we're describing it, we're using the simple present. And the third kind of simple present is when you talk, make sentences like this. This is the first time I eat uh, a burger. This is the second time I drink whiskey. This is the first time I watch this movie, okay? Or first time, second time, last time, doesn't matter. It's the verb that comes after this is the X time. These are examples of when to use the simple present. The present continuous is when an action is happening now. For example, I'm eating an apple. So this action of eating is happening right now. Also, when the action is going on in the background uh, continuously, for example, I am looking for a bigger apartment, or I'm searching for a bigger apartment. I'm writing a book. So I'm not right now doing it, but it is happening in the background. 
the action. Notice that with the present continuous in English, the verb is with like am and then uh, a participle. Okay, so am eating, am searching, am looking, am writing. Or like is, he is eating, he is looking. The third kind of present tense in Levantine Arabic is the simple present after an auxiliary verb. So this, the conjugation is a bit different in what way? Because an auxiliary verb are verbs like here, the ones underlined in red. For example, I want, and then you say the action follows this auxiliary verb. She likes to sleep. So likes here is the auxiliary verb. He refuses to talk. Refuses here is the auxiliary verb. We love to walk. The verbs underlined in green, this would be the simple present. However, the conjugation is slightly different. And I will start by uh, showing you the actual conjugation of the three types of present tense now. So let's start with the present tense, how to conjugate the simple present. So remember like habits, like I sleep at 11, telling a story, or this is the first time. How do you conjugate the simple present? So let's look now how to conjugate in the present tense. I'm going to take four examples for the conjugation. Verb katab, to write. Amil, to do. Ure, qara, to read, and akal, to eat. Okay? When conjugating in the present tense, for all the pronouns, there will be a prefix before the root. This prefix is actually standard. It is the same for all verbs, no matter what the root is. So when I'm, when I'm conjugating now, I'm going to be writing it in red. You can memorize this prefix and it will be used for all verbs in the present tense, no matter what the verb is. Some of the pronouns also get a suffix. Not all of them, only three of them. And when conjugating, I'm going to show you which one is always for the first person b. So now we're doing the simple present by the way. The uh, prefix for ana is b. Okay? What happens after the prefix? The root comes. The root is the three consonants ka and the ta and the ba. The root will always be in that same order kaf ta ba ka However, what I still need to adjust are the short vowels. What happens to the short vowels? Always the first radical, which is in this case the calf, will get a sukun, so no vowel sound, silent. So this would be bek, bek. The second radical will get either a fatha or a damma or a kasra. How do you know? You have to learn it. You learn it once, you apply it always, and you apply it for all the pronouns. It doesn't change. So if the second radical usually gets a damma, it will get a damma for all the pronouns. Okay, so let me tell you this. Uh, people have different accents, even in the Levant. So some people might say biktub, some would say biktib. Usually, a, a, an unwritten rule is the damma and the kasra, they can be used interchangeably. It's so, it's the second radical. Either takes damma or kasra, it doesn't matter, or a fatha. Okay. In this case, the kataba in Lebanese Syrian, it is biktub. So this, the second vowel on the second radical, which is the ta, would be the dhamma. 
big tub but look it's very short it's not like big tube big tub tub you barely hear what it is actually and that's it then you have the ba gets nothing so ana big tub big what is the vowel here it's a bit of a kasra kasra fatha it doesn't matter too much big tub okay inta what is the prefix of inta btik the ba and the ta and then like in kasra sound btik then you get the first radical of the root which is the calf then the second radical then the third the, see the root always stays together the three letters of the root you cannot separate them with any other letter only the short vowels so intact okay what do you think the calf gets as a vowel guess just like we said here, the sukun, so no vowel here. So, tick. What does the ta get? Exactly the same as ana. Okay, there's no difference. So, tick. Tub. So, actually, look, once you figure out that this is always a sukun, and for this verb, this is a dhamma it doesn't change so this would be your new root which you will apply for all of these pronouns you don't need to figure it out anymore what you now only need, will change is the prefix not the root anymore so inti gets the same prefix as inta so tick See, exactly the same. And the root is also exactly the same as inta. So, tick, So, notice I will not finish off the ba because I'm not finished yet. Tick, And for inti, because it's exactly the same as inta, you also need to add a suffix. Ticket b, and it's the ya. Okay, so the difference between inta and inti is the ya at the end. Also, this vowel changes a bit. You don't say ptik to b, you say ticket b. Actually, like no vowel here, because the vowel is at the end. Ticket B. So repeat. Inta ptiktub. Inti ticket B. Ticket B. Ticket B. So if you're finding it difficult to say beta, you don't really have to say a very clear ba. It's more like pt, pt. So the ba is just that your lips are on top of each other you start with like there then you say the ta ticket to be ticket to be ticket to be okay not bit ticket to be no ticket to be close your lips then say ta ticket to be okay what's the prefix of hue hue biek that's the prefix the ba and the ya b and then what happens with the root exactly the same as these so who will be and there's a sukun here nothing no vowel sound be tub no suffix for who only a prefix so who will be tub? Here gets also the same uh, gets the same suffix as inta and inti. Here b t with this like slight e sound 
and exactly the same root. So what do you notice here about here? Something very particular about here. Pick top. What do you notice? What is it like? Which one? It's exactly like inta. Inta tick top. Here tick top. Why is it like this? It's like this. There's no um, there's no uh, confusion because inta is when you're talking with someone and he is when you're talking about someone about a, a female someone so remember inta is exactly the same conjugation as in as he then, then we have nahna what's the sub prefix of nahna b'niktub nik The root is again exactly the same. K sukun ta ba nik tub. This the ba here it can sound like a meme. So nahna mniktub. It can sound like this mniktub because it's easier. And actually it doesn't matter. If you say bniktub, bniktub or mniktub, you can barely hear the difference. So don't make a fuss out of it. You can just say mniktub or bniktub. Into. What's the prefix of into? It's exactly like inta and inti. Again, ba. Ta, tik, but now it's the plural of inta and inti, so we also need a suffix. So the root is tik, sukun here as always, ta, ba, and we need a suffix, and in this case it is u to make it plural now some people can write it like this you can also write it with a wow elif it doesn't matter because in the end that this is dialect this is spoken arabic colloquial levantine there is no spelling for it okay so there is no rules of spelling you write what you hear so actually i'm fine with just if you just write a wow that's also fine into ticket boo i think in my book you will see an alif but it's a silent alif you don't have to pronounce it then hinne hinne has the same suffix as who be and then same root with the wow at the end. Bik tbu b and then a wow or a wow elif at the end. Doesn't matter. Okay, I want you to notice a couple of things. These are rules that just remember them and always apply them. First, the ones who get a suffix, the e inti gets an ya, into and hinni get, get u. Only these three get a suffix. Notice that when there is a suffix which is a long vowel at the end, there is here, sorry, on the ta, there is no vowel. Look, inti ptik tsbi, not like here ptik tob. There's no dhamma on the ta because of that ya at the end. Same thing for into and hinni. Into ptikt bu, hinni biikt bu, biikt bu. Okay? That's the first thing. So when there's a suffix, a long vowel, that short vowel on the second letter of the root is dropped. The second thing is notice that all the second person pronouns, so inta, inti, and into, all of them have the same prefix. Bt, bt, bt. 
You see, these are the second person pronouns. This, this, and this. Inta, inti, into. They all have the same prefix. Third, notice that huwe and hinne, that's the third person, they have the same prefix. Bia, bia. Remember these things. And then you're le left with hie. Hie has the same as the second person. Inta, inti. Into and here they all have the same prefix. Okay, so regarding the pronunciation, all the ones that have a short vowel on the second letter of the root, on the ta, when you pronounce them, because there is a sukun here and then a consonant with a short vowel, it, you it sounds as if there is a stop here. Look, big, to, as if you have two syllables, big, to, big, tub. See, so where there is that sukun, as if you have, you pause, you make, a, you, you finish the first syllable and then you start the second syllable, tick. Tub. Here, no, because there is no dhamma here. Here is it, ptikit, ptikit. Ah, look, as if there's an e here. Ptikit, b, inti, ptikit, b. Here, the pause is also after the calf. After the sukun, who will be a tub? He tick tick tub. Nahna nick tub. The last two they have a suffix, so the pause is here after the ta. Ticket boo. Hinne be Boo, as if there's a biket, biket, boo. All right. So that's how you conjugate all verbs in the present tense. Let's do now verb to do, amala. Usually students find it difficult because of the ayn, but actually you should see the ayn as a consonant and the, the conjugation is exactly the same as we just did with katab. Okay, so try to, while I'm doing it, try to guess before I do it. What would you, by looking at Biktub. So, Anna Biktub, what you need to know here is what happens to the root. This will become a sukun for sure, always. The first letter of the root becomes a sukun. And what happens to the second letter of the root? Will it get a dhamma, a fatha, or a kasra? Okay, in this case of Amala, in Lebanese it gets a U, Ba'amul, and in Syrian, Palestinian, it gets an E, Ba'amil. So whether you use a Dhamma here or a Kasra, it doesn't matter. Choose whichever you want. Let's do it the Syrian Palestinian way with an E. So again, the prefix is like Anna. It's just a ba, ba, and then you have the root, ain, mim, lam, ba, here there's a sukun, mil, Anna, ba, mil, I do, inta. Again, same prefix. Uh, so let's do it in red. Ta, but, look, but, ta, then the ain with the sukun, mim, lam, kasra. So, enta, ta, mel. Repeat. Inti. 
same thing, same suffix. Ta, bt, and then the root, ta, Okay, here, as we said, it, the meme, the second letter of the root, doesn't get an accent because there is a ya at the end. So, in tip tamli, tam, tam, a bit like this, pronounced like this, tam, li, ta, mel. See the difference? Here you stop after the sukun. Here there is no sukun, so you stop after the second letter of the root. But stop, like, it's not a stop, it's like, it's very, very brief pause. Ptameli, ptamli. It's not a pause, it actually, it defines a syllable. Okay, this is the first syllable, that's the second syllable. Ptamli, huwe. Same prefix, bia, bia, then the root, bia, mil, okay, bia, here is the pause, bia, mil, who bia, mil, he does, he, same, bitte, bitte, Ta mil ta mil okay like here tick to ta mil nahna bna mil bna ba noon then the root Na, there is a sukun here, so that's the first syllable. Bna, mil. And the, here is the first syllable. Bna, mil. Into. Same suffix. Ta, bta. Da, mlu. Right? So here the syllables are different because of the suffix. Ptam, ptam, lu. Into ptam lu. Hinne suffix is bia. Sorry, I'm. The space is a bit tight here. Bian Lu. <laughs> so Bia, same prefix. Bian Lu. And the syllables are like the into. Bian Lu. In a Bian Lu. So let's repeat it. Anna Bamel. I do. Inta Tamel. Inti Tamli. Hue Biamel. Hie Tamel. Nahna Namel into Tamlu Hinne Biamlu. So that was verb to do. To do. Now, in Levantine Arabic, this is verb to read. Qara. Okay. I'm not going to now change the colors. I'm just going to write it. So, Anna, again, book, 
ر in Levantine we don't say the Hamza with verb to read in the present tense so أنا ب ب ر here look Again, you have the sukun on the kaf. However, the second letter of the, the radical of the root doesn't need a vowel because it's followed by an alif. So you don't need to figure out what happens to this accent. It just goes away and this is pronounced as alif. So you can say bqra or bqra. Inta. Right, pt, pt, ra, inti, pt, again, pt, right, pt, ri. Hmm. So here it's again the. Two syllables are similar with inti. Bt, ri, huwe, starts with bia, right? Bia, ra, hie, bia, ra, hie, bt, bt, ra. So actually, this is even easier because with this one, you're just using the same suffixes, what we have here in, sorry, prefixes, which we have here in red. And this is not changing. It's ra the whole time. Ra, ra, ri, ra, ra. Okay, nahna, bna, ra, bna, ra. So, bna, same, same prefix. Into is bta, right? Bta. What happens here? You cannot put alif, then wow. In Arabic, you cannot have two long vowels like this at the end. Okay, so the alif is replaced by the suffix, which is wow. So, into bta, ru. So, bta. You're stopping here. That's the first syllable. Pt ru. Hinne. The prefix is bia. Right? B b ya. And then ru again. Bia ru. Hinne bia ru. They read. Let's repeat to read. Anna, repeat after me. B ra. Inta. Pt ra. Inti. Pt ri. Hue. B ra. Hie. Bt-ra. Nahna. Bn-ra. Into. Bt-ru. Hinne. Bi-ru. So anytime you have a verb with two consonants followed by Hamza, you conjugate it this way. Hamza on the alif. Third one we're going to do today is akala, verb to eat, because it starts with the hamza. Again here, we, we, the hamza, we drop it in Levantine Arabic, and we conjugate it as alif. So what happens here, the suffixes stays, stay the same, ba, and then the root becomes a, Kul, ba, kul. So the hamza is dropped. 
the alif becomes part of the root, the first letter of the root, and the fatha on the second radical becomes a dhamma. So ba kul, ana ba kul, I eat. Inta. Ta kul. So that kul will never doesn't change as long as there's no suffix coming after. Inta ta kul. Inti. Ta, right? Pta again. Pta pta pta. Kli. So no u here because of the suffix the ya. Inti ta kli. Huwe. Bia. Kul. Here there is no suffix, so the dhamma comes back. Bia kul. Here. Ta pta, right? Ta kul. Nahna. Bna. Kul. Into ta beta ta clue. So here we have a suffix, the wow. That's why there's no dhamma here. Ta clue. Hene bia clue. See, all I did was use exactly the same stuff prefixes in red here. I used them here and I did the root became Alif, Kaf, Dhamma, Lam. Let's pronounce it. Let's repeat it. Verb to eat in the present, simple present. Ana, Bakul. Inta, Ptakul. Inti Ptakli Hue Biakul He Ptakul Nahna Nakul Into Ptaklu Hene Biaklu Bravo Aleikum. That was the simple present. Don't worry, the rest, the present continuous and the present with an auxiliary verb is very we just do a slight difference to difference to this there's not much difference look what we're gonna do what what was that that is when you have a sentence with i want to read i like to eat so how do you conjugate uh, to eat, to read, in this case, I want to read, I like to eat, I refuse to do, to do, how do you conjugate it? Uh, I like to write. Okay, you conjugate them in the present tense, just like we did the simple present. However, the difference is, the first person doesn't get a ba here, but gets an a, like the beginning of the pronoun, ana. So this becomes 
Ekt. Ektub. Amil. Amil. Ökra. Or ökra. And this becomes ekul. This becomes a super long elif, as if it has a matta. Ekul. So, how would my sentence be? I want to write. Bedi ektub. So, actually, I'm saying I want, I write, but just without the ba. I want, I like to do. Bhab amel. I love to read. Ktir bhab ukra. I want to eat. Bidi akul. So in all these examples, the auxiliary verb was the bidi, and the present tense verb is to write, to do, to ektub, amel, ukra, akul. So you notice if here I use as auxiliary verb biddi and bahib, you can have more uh, auxiliary verb like to refuse, to start, to start writing. Okay, that would be also the same. Now, uh, how would the rest, what would I do with the rest of the pronouns when there is the present with an auxiliary verb? Also, the ba, all the bar go away but not like I'm erasing now because zoom erases right away the next letter only the bar is gone and my prefix becomes the ta here right remember because it was ba ta I removed the bar I'm left only with the ta see I removed this bar I'm left with the ta. So, inta beddak. So, you want to write. Tiktub. Actually, I'm saying you want, you write. Beddak tiktub. Bed, inta beddak tamil. Beddak tikra. Bedak Tekul. Let's use now as auxiliary only Bedak verb to want for to make it uh, um, simpler. Inti, same, I'm left with the ta. Bedik ticket be. I remove the ba again. Bedik timely. Bedik. Tri, bedik, takli, huwe, huwe. I remove the ba. I'm left with the ya. Bedu, yiktub. Bedu, yamel. Bedu, yera. Bedu yakul hiye bedda tiktub bedda tamil bedda tira bedda takul nahna bedna we're left only with the noon bedna niktub Bedna Namil Bedna Nara Bedna Nakul Into Bitcoin, I'm left with the ta Bitcoin Ticket Boo Bitcoin Tamlu Bitcoin 
تقروا بدكن تاكلوا هن عم لفت ودي اياه بدن يكتبوا بدن يعملوا بدن يقروا بدن ياكلوا okay so that's how you do the present tense when there is an auxiliary verb before it finally the present continuous so with the present continuous it was in english like i am eating i am writing i am doing i am reading right i am so in arabic it's very similar why because you use like you say am in in english in arabic you use the word am with ain mim Um, but the difference in Arabic is the same. Am doesn't change for all pronouns. Okay, so that's the present continuous with, with the am, and the actual verb. It doesn't matter actually. It could be with ba or without ba. You know how we remove the ba here. I find it easier without ba like um or the first person i would do it with ba so ana i am writing is ana am biktub i am doing am baamil i am reading ana am bukra i am eating am baakul okay so actually I used here the ba like I did in the simple present with am. For enta, I don't use it ba. Okay, but this is look whether you use ba or not, it's really not a big deal. You can in this case or you don't. Whatever you found easier, you find easier. So enta, you are writing enta am tiktub. You are doing enta am. Tamil. You are reading in Tam Tara. You are eating in Tam Takul. In Ti Am Tikitbi. Am Tamli. Am Tari. Am Takli. Who? Am Yiktub. Am Yamil. Am yira, am yakul. Here, am tiktub, am tamil, am tira, am takul. Nahna, am niktub, am namil. Am Nara Am Nakul Into Am Tikitbu Am Tamlu Am Tru Am Taklu Hinne Am Yikitbu Am Yamlu Am Yeru um, yeah, clue. Okay, so that was it for Levantine Arabic. Next, we will do modern standard Arabic, Fosha.